the iPhone 13 Pro Max. There are many things to cover, so I'll focus on what's important to me, image quality and sharpness. This video is broken down into three parts where I first discuss pictures, followed by ProRes, and then the three cameras. I'll not cover areas like audio, special camera modes that I think are just a gimmick, and the selfie cam. The comparisons will be done against the iPhone 11 Pro Max and S20 Ultra, both very competent phones. A Sony a7 Mark III, paired with a shitty general purpose zoom lens, will act as a benchmark for the main and telephoto cameras. This lens will hamper the a7 severely in the tests. DJI Pocket 2 will be used to compare stabilization and the ultrawides, and let's get started. Pictures aren't the main focus, phones already match full frame cameras in that aspect. Your trained eye might be able to appreciate details like corner sharpness, but to the average person, the iPhone will still take more vibrant and visually pleasing shots with the least manual input. Not much improvement over two generations, it's like trying to please spot the difference even after cropping in 400% to highlight imperfections. Samsung's quality comes from the 108 megapixels. Is it 9 times as clear as the iPhone though? Of course not. The lens I paired the Sony with will be its downfall. I have not made any color tweaks and they just turn out looking different. Ultrawide sees a great leap in quality at night. The longer telephoto from 2x to 3x also improves sharpness for faraway objects. Sony makes a comeback with a caveat, you need steady hands. The iPhones might take longer exposures of 2 seconds, but amazing stabilization and post-processing ensures a sharp image. To summarize, the iPhone takes great images, but the comparatively low megapixel count is holding it back in daylight photos. The ultra-wide and telephoto cameras see improvement over the 11, but it's still not good. On to ProRes. ProRes is a video format that retains more data for manual processing afterwards. To the average user, you'll never need ProRes because normal mode already takes good video by default. In certain scenarios, ProRes actually looks far worse as it's not a magical format that compensates for the substandard hardware of the iPhone. For example, the ultrawide camera will still take rubbish video regardless and no amount of manual processing I threw can save it. The benefits of ProRes comes in flexibility it provides you while editing afterwards. Adjusting the highlights and colors of your scene, adjusting underexposed areas and removing minor noise with tools like Neat Video, which works better with fine noise of the ProRes footage instead of compression artifacts. Banding is also eliminated. Most people won't go through the trouble of color correcting every clip they take. And there is no point to using ProRes for a video that looks identical while taking up 10 times more storage. If you use ProRes, you already know what you want. If you don't know what ProRes is, there's no need to use it. Main camera. The main camera has some hardware changes over the 11, a larger aperture, a larger sensor, and sensor shift technology instead of OIS improves stabilization. Videos taken with the 11 will have jitters and the 13 almost completely eliminated these artifacts. Daylight photos see minimal improvement. A larger sensor area improves low light video substantially and it seemed to have even matched the A7. Ultra wide camera. This is not a question of how bad it is, it has always been much worse than the main camera. But how much worse? I dream of the day where the secondary cameras match the main camera in quality. The larger f1.8 aperture in the 13 does seem to help in reducing noise and brightening the image. It's still a far cry from the DJI Pocket 2 and the main sensor. 
The lack of OIS means it's stuck with digital image stabilization, which Apple has nailed and looks far more natural than the S20 and smoother than the A7. telephoto camera is caught severely lacking. The A7 absolutely dominated in this category as it should, with the Samsung actually outperforming the iPhone here. Daytime video is the same story with the iPhone 13 coming in the middle. The same atrociously small sensor and shrunk aperture results in even less light being let in which once again, no amount of post-processing can save. It even seems that the tele on the 13 has regressed stabilization, which makes the sensor literally unusable. Apple really got to start upping the game in these secondary cameras. In conclusion, there is no conclusion. A phone is much more than camera. You can't sway someone like me to replace my Android phone just because the camera is good. That's what a dedicated camera is for. Even though Apple has packed the best video and main camera, you can run away from the fact that it still has a lightning port, the data notch is still there, and no amount of camera features can push someone who doesn't like iOS to use iOS. I can only hope that Android can match up in the video department soon. Goodbye.